Craft Warehouse followers. Today, we're gonna to be making this crescent moon shaped ring here. I'm really excited. This is a really fun one and just has a really unique shape. So a few things that you're gonna need is you're gonna need 20 gauge wire, whether it's this, this spool or your German style. You wanna just make sure it's round and again, it's a 20 gauge. And then I have some six millimeter um, aura beads here. So just any gemstone you really like or crystal. Um, I just like these because it has that nice little um, rainbow shine on it. So, and then I'm gonna need a mandrel. This is gonna help of course form our ring and a little bit of our crescent. And then I am also using our step bale pliers. So this is gonna help me again, form a little bit of our crescent um, on our ring. I am using my bent nose pliers. That's just a preference of mine. Um, chain nose pliers is great for this project. You always wanna make sure you got your flush cutters. So I got my flush cutters here. And then I do have two types of um, wire straightener. So I have my nylon pliers and the three nylon roller wire straightener. Now, what I like about these is you can use them for two different things. This roller is great for my longer pieces. And then this is really good for any of those little bumps you're getting along the way when you're wire wrapping or just a small section of wire. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire. I'm going to take about 12 inches. I'm going to go in with my flush cutters, making sure that flat side is on the wire I want to keep. And then we're going to go ahead and straighten our wire. So I'm going to use those three roller nylon. And you just put it in there and pull. So I'm going to show that again. So you want to make sure your wire is nicely in between all three of those rollers and you want to just hold it tight and pull so it's going to get any kinks out make sure your wire is nice and straight so from here I'm going to go ahead and put on one of my beads I'm going to roughly put it in the middle and then I'm going to go ahead and take my right side I'm going to wrap it right around this bead, trying to keep it as snug as I can along the way. And then what I find is I don't want my piece to really be unraveling on me. Um, so I personally like to take this wire and bring it up through the little gap that we formed when we wrapped the wire around the bead. And I'm gonna probably come in here and use my pliers help get this wire through. Okay, so I have my wire through. This is kind of bumpy, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the little nylon pliers and just straighten that out. Again, I wanna make sure my wire stays kink free. The less kinks and maneuvering of the wire, the better and stronger it's gonna get, or be. So from here, I want to go ahead and make uh, about, I'd say a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna come in with those bale pliers and I'm gonna go on the second largest one here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it right around about halfway. And then I am gonna actually kind of bend it just a little bit, help form it. I wanna make sure this has a pretty good arch. So make sure that's nice and rounded out. And then wherever you want your um, point of your crescent to be, you want to go ahead and just fold that wire right on top of itself at a 90 degree angle. Now from here, I'm going to come in with my mandrel. And I'm going to take that wire and I'm just going to 
wrap it right around the top here. So that's gonna form my outer side of my crescent. Oops. And then I'm just gonna kind of make sure it's forming the way I want. And then from here, I just kind of take my pliers and squish that wire right into that crescent form. So I still need a little bit more um, of my form of my crescent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap that around my mandrel. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and wrap around our wire three times. I want my crescent moon to be on the top. I want my wire of my crescent moon to come up on the bottom side. So I'm gonna wrap as tight as I can around here. I'm gonna do three times, that's just a preference. Um, two should work. I do have a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze those together. And I'm gonna cut off the excess. So again, flush side of my cutters is um, on the wire I wanna keep, and then I'm just gonna fold that cut in over so it won't be poking anybody. Now, I'm gonna bring in that mandrel. This is where you wanna go ahead and put it wherever your finger fits. So I am gonna just roughly form it, and then I'm gonna shove my wire through. Through the opposite side on the crescent. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bend it right on over. So see how it's bent right along that mandrel, I'm gonna pull it off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up and over three times like the other side. If you're having a hard time keeping your form of your ring, go ahead and keep that on there. And one more time, up and through. I'm gonna squeeze those together. Now that we got our ring nice and shaped, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that excess wire. And then I'm just gonna fold it so that there's no rough edges sticking out. And when I cut those ends, I wanna make sure that it's gonna be on the back side because I don't wanna see that cut wire on the front. Now that you have it all wrapped, um, one thing you could do, which I tend to like to do with my rings, is put this back on the mandrel and just take a chasing hammer. And hammer it on out. I think it just makes my ring a little bit more sturdy. But you do not need to. I don't have this one as it and I, uh, I did not hammer this one out. And I do think it's a little less weak or it's a little bit more weak. So, just like to take that chasing hammer all the way through.
And there you have it. You're never gonna have two crescents the same, but I love it. They make them so unique, um, and they're just super eye-catching. Well, thank you for following me, you guys, and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.